Hello, welcome to our channel Elimika Mtandaoni. My name is Agustino Mogosi. Uh, today I'm bringing you uh, the seventh lecture on a series of lectures on information system. And this is the seventh lecture where we'll be talking about systems from a constituent's perspective. I remember in the fifth lecture uh, we discussed the, um, the types of information system uh, on functional perspective. Uh, we know that although a functional perspective, as we discussed in that lecture, lecture five, is very useful in understanding how these uh, business systems serve some specific uh, functions. But this perspective, the functional perspective, uh, does not exactly tell us how systems help managers manage the firm. So it is very important, therefore, um, to examine systems in terms of various levels of management and the types of decisions that they support. That's why uh, now we will be discussing about uh, systems in a constituent perspective. The word constituents, it means uh, levels. Uh, so we'll be talking about uh, the types of information systems uh, according to the levels of management. You know that business firms, like all other organizations, they achieve coordination by hiring uh, the so-called managers, uh, whose responsibility is to ensure all the various parts of an organization work together. So whether it is uh, a department or any division within an organization, there must be a person who, whose responsibility is to ensure that uh, that particular division, that particular uh, department, or that particular organization uh, work uh, together. So firms coordinate the work of employees in various divisions by uh, developing um, a hierarchy in which the authority, when we talk about authority, we mean uh, the responsibility and the accountability. So the authority is concentrated at the top. That means we have a kind of a, a hierarchy, uh, like a pyramid, where uh, the responsibility, the authority is found at the top. That means we have a number of uh, levels. We have a number of levels where uh, the top level is the one that is at the, the top. So the hierarchy of management, as we have discussed, uh, the hierarchy of management, as we have discussed, is composed of uh, the following. It is composed of three important uh, levels. The first one is senior management. Uh, the second one is middle management. The third one is operational management. So when we talk about uh, senior management, it is the one which makes long-range strategic decisions about products and services, as well as to ensure financial performance of the firm. So these top-level managers, we call them senior managers, or top-level uh, managers, or in other words, we call them executives. Executives. Here is where you find the top most leaders of a particular organization. These are the ones that make um, strategic decisions on how uh, the firm will perform. So they can even predict in uh, some years to come what would be happening. And they rely on information from the lower managers that we call uh, the middle level uh, managers. But once they plan and they create some programs, they pass these programs and and the plans to the middle level managers, where these middle level managers are the ones that carry out those programs and plans that have been made by the senior uh, managers. Then from the middle level managers, we have the operational managers. These are the lower level managers. They are found at the bottom of the hierarchy. They are called operational managers. And in fact, these are found, uh, they are responsible for monitoring the day-to-day -day activities. So if we are talking about an organization, these in some organizations are the ones that are called the supervisors. They are called the supervisors. And they are the ones that monitor daily activities of the business. So 
Those are the three major levels in the hierarchy of management. But under middle level managers, we have the knowledge workers. These knowledge workers actually design products or services and create new knowledge for the firm. And when we talk about operational managers, we also have the data workers and production or service workers. Speaking of data workers, these are the, uh, we have an example, we have the secretaries, the clerks uh, that work, actually they normally assist with the paperwork or they assist the managers at all levels in what they, they do. We know the roles of secretaries. For example, if you are, you want to uh, uh, to to have you have a responsibility with a certain manager, then you first have to meet the secretary uh, that will help you or would assist uh, the manager uh, to perform that kind of uh, responsibility. So we have secretaries, we have clerks. We call them uh, data workers. Uh, they assist these um, managers at all levels. But we also have production or service workers. Production or service workers. These are also found under the operational management level. These production or service workers actually produce the product and deliver the service. So these are the real producers of um, within the organization. So if we have an organization produces a certain product, these are the real uh, workers. So uh, each of these groups has different needs has different needs of information each of these uh, groups has different needs for information uh, given they are different responsibilities and each can be seen as major information constituents so what are the informational needs of uh, managers within an organization starting with the senior managers or the executive or the top level managers these need summarized information why do they need summarized information they need summary information so that they can quickly inform them about the overall performance of the firm so they don't need detailed information the information should be summarized such that they can give a glance and get to make a decision very quickly. For example, if you are in an organization that produces, let's say, soaps, then they don't need uh, the details of what particular soap was sold in which day at what shop. All they need, probably they may need how many soap have been sold today or how many soaps have been sold a certain day, or how many soaps have been sold, uh, let's say, Mwanza. Just uh, not the details of which type of soap in, uh, go in details. They need only summarized information. But if the information is about specific information, this is for middle managers, because middle managers are the ones that need more specific information on the results of specific functional area. What are the real details uh, at the particular functional area or a department? When it comes to operational managers, these operational managers need transactional level information. That is the day-to-day -day, uh, information. That means what has been sold, uh, to whom, at what time. So the details of particular information, the uh, transactional level information, these are the ones that are needed uh, by the operational managers. But these knowledge workers, they need access to external scientific databases and internal database with the organizational knowledge. And the production or service workers also need access to information from products, they need information from machines, they need information from service workers, they need access to customer records so that they can take order, they can uh, take care of the customers, etc., uh, etc. Now, each of these three main groups uses different types of information systems. They need, they use different types of information uh, systems. They use these information systems to deliver information that is required to manage the company. So, therefore, if we look at information systems in a uh, constituent perspective, then we have about four types of information system. That means we have 
transactional processing system, we have management information system, we have decision support system, and we have executive support systems. And remember, each of these systems serve a particular level of management. As we have seen that we have three main levels of management. We have three main constituents. We have the top level management that is the senior management we have the middle level management and we have the lower level management which we call it the operational level uh, management so now let us go into details and look at these systems each one after another we will start with a, a transactional processing system in short we call it a tps we call it tps that means it is a transactional uh, processing system Remember, we talked about operational managers. These operational managers need systems that can keep track of the elementary activities, the primary activities, and the transactions of the organization. For example, they need systems that could tell about the sales, the receipts, the cash deposits, the payroll, the credit decisions, and the flow of materials in a factory. That means they need information that are in a day-to-day -day activity. So, when you talk about transactional processing systems, these TPS systems provide this kind of information. That means they provide, they keep track of the primary activities and transactions of the organization. So they keep track of what sales have been done today, uh, the receipts, the cash deposits, etc. A transaction processing system actually is a computerized system and it performs and records the daily routine transactions necessary to conduct business, such as sales order, uh, let's say you want to put an order, hotel reservations, the payroll, the employee record keeping, and even uh, the shipping. So the purpose of uh, this system at this level is to answer routine questions. When I say routine questions, the questions that are repetitive, and in that case, they track the flow of transactions through the organization. For example, um, if you ask a question, how many parts are in inventory, then the TPS system is possible to answer this. What happens to Mr. X payment? For example, Mr. X made a payment, then he hasn't received maybe his orders or his, his products. Then what happens to Mr. X? So to answer these kinds of questions, then information generally must be easily available, must be current, and must be accurate. So at the operational level, tasks, resources, and goals are predefined and they are highly structured. I say they are highly structured. When you say they are highly structured, it means that uh, you can predict what is the result of what action, that each and every action has got an answer. That means if X is done, then it should Y should be done. Or if that means if there is a direct proportionality, that means they are highly structured. They have a specific definition. So the decision to, let's say, to grant a credit to a customer, for example, um, this can be made by just a lower uh, supervisor, a lower level manager. So managers at the lower level need TPS. That means they need transaction processing system uh, to monitor the status of internal operations of the firm's relations with the external environment. So, and we know that the TPS are the major producers of information for other systems. So when we talk about other systems, let's say the management information system, the decision support system, they all depend on data from the uh, transaction processing system. The transaction processing systems are often central to a business. That the failure of these TPS, that means if the transaction processing system fails to operate within a day, for example, uh, the ATM or the, 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 the bank teller uh, system, that the, the system that bank teller uses, or let's say this ASIM uh, banking of CRDB or Wakala of Vodacom, those are examples of uh, transaction processing systems. If they fail just for a few hours, then this can lead to firms diminish and perhaps that of other firms linked to it. So what imagine, uh, let's say, the M-Pesa 
fails to operate within a day, what will happen to uh, Vodacom? All the ATMs in all ATMs in Tanzania, all of the ATMs, let's say for a certain bank, all of them they fail to operate within a single day. What do you think will happen to the the banks? So it will be a disaster. So these transaction processing systems are the systems that operate on a daily basis. And they are the ones that make sure that the, 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 the organization remains intact. Uh, we have another type of information system. Uh, we call it management information system. This is for middle managers. Middle management needs system to help with monitoring, to help with control and decision making and even administrative activities. So the principal question that is addressed by this system is like, are the things working well? So if you want to know if things are working well or not, then you need the management information system. Actually, by definition, management information systems are designates or the, uh, they mean the specific category of information system that serve the middle managers. The management information system, they provide middle managers with reports on organization's current performance. So they rely on the data from the transaction processing system. And the information from the transaction processing systems, once they are summarized, they give reports. And those reports, uh, they talk about the organization's current performance. This information is then used to monitor and control the business and even uh, predict the future performance of the business. So management information system summarize and report on companies' basic operations using data that are surprise, supplied by the uh, transaction processing system. So the basic transaction data from TPS are compressed and usually processed in reports that are produced on a regular schedule. So those products, are, those reports are then are sent to the system which we call management information system. And in today's world, these uh, many reports are delivered online. So illustratically, if I illustrate then data from the, uh, the, the TPS, data from the TPS, so let's say this is a TPS system, then it collects data from the users, it, then it transforms information, it gives information. This information is then sent to this other uh, system, which we call it management information system. And this, the, the information that goes to the management information system is in form of summaries, in form of reports. And managers use these management information systems here uh, to monitor, uh, to control, and even to predict the future performance of uh, the organization. Uh, management information system serve managers primarily that are interested in weekly or monthly or yearly results. Although some of the management information systems enable managers to drill down to see daily or hourly data that is, is required. So generally, management information system provide answers to routine questions that have been specified in advanced and have predefined the procedures for answering them. For example, a management information system reports might list the total pounds of, let's say, a certain product that has been used in a certain quarter. You see, uh, for example, if you want to uh, find, let's say, uh, total sales that have been done in this week in a certain organization, then that kind of information is provided through the management information system. But this management information system collects data from the uh, transport or uh, processing TPS uh, system that we, uh, we know, the transaction processing uh, system. Uh, we have now, uh, this is just an illustration of what happens to uh, management information system. We have, um, let's say, order file. That means this is a kind of uh, table. For example, we have a TPS database, the transaction processing system as 
as is made up of, for a number of files or a number of tables. One table could put data about orders, some could put data about production, some could put data about accounting things, some could put data about uh, finance issues, uh, some could put data about human resource. Those data are then fed into the, uh, the processing system which can process each data according in a daily basis. So uh, order data will be processed in an order processing system. Uh, production data will be processed in a uh, material resource planning system, as we can see here. And accounting uh, data will also be processed in the general ledger system. For example, all these systems here are transaction processing system. Then once data, order data, production data and accounting data have been processed, then they produce information. Such information are then sent into another system, um, which we call management information system. That means the sales data enter into the management information system. The uh, production data, that is unity, and the product chart data are sent into the management information system. And even the accounting data, let's say accounting payable, accounting receivable data are sent into the management information system. This management information system, once it processes that data, it produces summarized information in form of reports. Then this these reports are the ones that are used by uh, managers. These reports are the ones that are used by managers. So you can pause the, 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 the video and just look at this diagram on how uh, management information system works. Management information system depend on data from transaction processing system. This here is a transaction processing system. That means it includes the data and the information that is produced. We put the order data and enter into this uh, transaction processing system. It produces sales uh, units, sales uh, data, unit production from the production data, accounting, we have the expense, we have the payable, we have the receivable, all those then enter into this major system we call it management information system that processes them to produce information in form of reports and such reports are then sent to the managers where they use such reports uh, to make decisions now again we have uh, under the uh, middle level managers we have what we call decision support systems uh, decision support systems support non-routine decision making for middle managers. When I say non-routine, that means they are not structured. Decisions are not structured. They focus on problems that are unique and they can rapidly change, for which the procedure for arriving at a solution may not be full predefined in advance. So, for example, today, uh, let's say, um, something happens that we didn't plan we as managers did not plan but we have to make decisions on how uh, to ensure that the performance of the organization is not affected then that kind of decision is not structured it is not predefined in advance so a uh, decision to support systems they try to um, answer questions such as the following for example what would be the impact on production schedule if uh, we try to double sales in this month of December. For example, uh, you have an organization that produces, let's say, certain products, and you say, let us decide to double production in this month of December, simply because this month of December probably is uh, a, the season of uh, celebrations, etc. So you can ask yourself, you can ask uh, the decision support system, what, uh, would be the impact of doubling the production schedules? Or what would happen uh, to our return on investment if a factory schedule uh, to delay in, let's say, six months? So such kind of questions that require prediction, the answers to uh, such questions are predictory. That means they are not clear, they are not defined, they are non-routine, then we can use are decision support systems. Although decision support systems use internal information from a transaction processing system and management information system, but they often bring information 
are from external sources. So uh, when we talk of if this is a decision support a decision support system, then it takes information from transaction processing systems, then it takes information also from management information systems, but also it takes information from external systems external systems that means those systems that belong does do not belong to uh, to the company so this uh, information includes uh, external sources such as the current stock prices or the product prices of the competitors you need to know what uh, prices your competitors uh, use these systems use variety of models to analyze data they condense large amount of data into a form in which uh, decision makers can analyze them. So decision support systems are designed so that users can work with them directly. And in most of the times, they use what we call dashboards. An interesting, small but powerful decision support system uh, can be um, an SRA uh, for uh, top level managers, for the um, the higher level uh, managers, device counselors, they can use this kind of decision uh, support uh, systems. Um, let's look on what we call executive support system as another uh, type of information system uh, according to constituents. Uh, the senior managers or the top level managers need systems that address the strategic issues and long-term trends, both in the firm and in the external environment. They are concerned with the questions like, what will the employment level be in five years, for example? What are the long-term industry cost trends? And where does our firm fit in? What products should be making in five years to come? What new acquisitions would protect us from uh, cyclical business swings? So executive support systems help senior managers make these kind of decisions. They address non-routine decisions that require judgment, evaluation, and even insight because there is no agreed on procedure for arriving at a solution. So executive support systems provide a generalized computing and communication capacity that can be applied to a changing array of problems. These are designed to incorporate data about external events, such as new tax laws or new competitors. But they also draw summarized information from uh, management information system. They draw summarized information from decision support system. They then filter this information. They compress and track some critical data, displaying the data of the greatest information uh, to those senior uh, managers. And executive support systems normally present graphs and data from many sources through an interface that is easier for senior managers to use. Often, these information are delivered to senior executives through what we call a portal. Actually, a portal uses web interface to present integrated, personalized business content. So that is what we call uh, transaction uh, executive support system. Let's look at this model uh, or an illustration. Uh, this system, as we can see here, pulls data from diverse internal and external sources and makes them available to executive in an easy form. As you can see here, it pulls data from the executive, sorry, uh, it pulls data here uh, from the different uh, sources and it brings uh, those data for these managers. So uh, it brings internal data from the TPS, from the MIS, the financial data, the office system data, the modeling data, the, also the external data from other sources, the standard and the poor's. Then these data are pulled into the executive support system, the portal, the executive support system, the executive support system here. And this executive support system provides the menus, the graphics, the communication, and even local uh, processing. Uh, now, after you have understood these uh, levels or systems according to constituents or according to levels, now let's see 
the relationship that exists between these system to one another the systems that we have described they are interrelated these systems are interrelated tps this one here uh, the transaction processing uh, system the tps this one as you can see here um, is typically a major source of data for other system as you can see here it gives data to the decision support system and also it gives data to the management information system the other types of systems may exchange data with each other as well data also may be exchanged among systems serving different functional area for example an order that has been captured by a sales system may, may be transmitted to a manufacturing system as a transaction for processing or delivering the product specified in order to or uh, management information system to provide what we call a report so in most organizations these systems have been loosely integrated so this tps provides data to decision support system and management information system and we know that we know also the management information system provides data to executive support system and also provides data to decision support system which also provides data to the executive uh, support system so there is a relationship of these system but in most organizations these systems are not integrated these systems are not integrated they exist or not in a kind of integration so they bring about new problems so to solve those problems we have what we call uh, systems that span uh, the enterprise reviewing all different types of systems as we have described my you might wonder how a business can manage all these information in different systems you might also wonder how costly it might be how costly is it to maintain so many different systems and you might wonder how these different systems can share information and how managers and employees can coordinate their work in fact these are all excellent questions and they give challenges for business in this day today that's why we have what we call uh, enterprise systems uh, getting all the different kinds of systems in a company to work together is actually a challenge and corporations are put together uh, both through normal organic growth and through acquisition of small firms over a period of time corporations end up with collection of systems most of them they are older systems and they face a number of challenges uh, to get them to talk to one another so there is a kind of disintegration there are several uh, problems that exist because of these systems not to integrate to one another so we need solutions for those there are several solutions but one among the solutions is what we call introduction of enterprise applications inter so we have introduced what we call enterprise application as one of the solutions uh, of this integrations enterprise applications are systems that span the functional areas they focus on executing business processes across the business firm and they include all levels of management enterprise application systems they help our businesses to become more flexible and productive by coordinating their business processes more closely and integrating groups of processes so that they focus on efficient management of resources and customer services and when we talk about our enterprise uh, applications there are four major enterprise applications there are four major enterprise applications uh, we have what we call uh, enterprise systems we have what we call enterprise systems these ones we have uh, supply chain management systems we have customer relationship management systems and knowledge management systems each of these uh, applications they integrate related set of functions and business processes to enhance the performance of organizations as a whole 
So uh, there are these systems, they create what we call uh, integration. As you can see here, as you can see here in this figure, the enterprise applications automate processes that span multiple business functions. You know here we have a number of business functions. We have sales and marketing. We have manufacturing and production. We have finance and accounting. We have human resources. These are the functional area. But as you can see, the, 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 these systems, for example, the supply chain, the customer relationship management, the enterprise systems, they all span across all the uh, organizational uh, management system. Now, let us discuss these systems one after another, starting with the enterprise systems. Enterprise systems, they have got another name for them. We call it enterprise resource planning systems. Actually, these solve uh, the problem by collecting data from various key business processes. For example, they collect various key business processes from manufacturing and production, finance and accounting, sales and marketing, and human resources. And after that, after collecting data from all those sources, from all those departments, then they store such data in a central data rep repository. This makes it possible for information that were previously fragmented in different systems to be shared across the firm and for the different parts of the business to work more closely together. So if here we have data about Agustino Mogos as a customer, then in, uh, let's say, human resource, we have another data for Agustino Mogos as an employee. Then all this data about Agustino Mogos will be centralized in one central repository that we call it uh, enterprise resource uh, planning system. So enterprise system speed communication of information through the company. It makes it easier for businesses to coordinate their data operations. When a customer places an order, for example, the data flow automatically to other parts of the company that are affected by them. So the order transaction triggers the warehouse to pick the ordered products and schedule the shipment. Then the warehouse informs the factory to replenish whatever has depleted. And the accounting department also is notified, uh, is notified to send the customer an invoice. Then the customer service representative track the progress of the order through every step to inform customers about the status of their product. So enterprise systems give companies the flexibility to respond to rapidly to the customer's request while producing and stocking inventory only with what is needed to fulfill existing uh, orders. If you have ever, uh, uh, you, you have ever gone to, let's say, to this uh, KFC, uh, KFC's uh, foodstuffs or the Pizza Hut's, the way they operate is a kind of an enterprise system. When you place your order at the counter, your order automatically is sent to the production part where your pizza will be uh, prepared. And as you are going to take your seat, you find that after a few minutes, you get to receive your, your order. Because uh, every part, every system that is integrated to this enterprise system gets notified of whatever has been done in one part of the system. And that is what we call integration system, enterprise uh, system. Now, we have another system that is called the supply chain management system. This helps businesses manage relationship with suppliers. That other one, enterprise system, is for the whole organization. It, it takes the whole organization, the manufacturing and production department, the sales and marketing, the accounting and, 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 and finance, the human resource, all those data from all those parts, they can be centralized in a central repository that we call enterprise system. But when we talk about supply chain management system, this helps business managers uh, manage relationship with their supplier. So there is an external user. These systems provide information to help suppliers, purchasing firms, distributors, and even logistic companies to share information about orders, 
production, inventory levels, the delivery of products, the services so that they can uh, source, they can produce, they can deliver goods and services efficiently. So your supplier gets to know if your order is now replenishing. So if you had, let's say, 30 items and your supplier gets to know that uh, you are selling these items and they remain five. Then your supplier also gets notified at the same time as you manager gets notified that the, 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 the items are now uh, lowering in level. So after the supplier gets notification that your items are lower, then he gets to ship uh, the the, the, the items to your company. So if a company and its supply network do not have accurate information, then they will uh, most likely be saddled by excessive inventory, inaccurate manufacturing plans, missed the production schedules, inability to move products efficiently through the supply chain, and that raises cost while uh, degrading customer uh, services. So uh, supply chain management systems are one type of inter-organizational systems. They are one type of inter-organizational systems. Why inter-organizational system? Because they automate the flow of information across organizational boundaries. They involve other external organizations, the suppliers, the people for logistics. So you will find examples of other systems of interorganizational information systems as we go on with this uh, uh, series of lectures. Uh, now let us proceed. As you can see here, we have an example of supply chain management system. Here we have customer orders shipping notifications, optimized shipping plans, and other uh, supply chain information that they flow among a certain warehouse management system and transport management system. And then it's back end, the corporate system. So you see here, that this is the middleware that connects uh, all these uh, warehouse management system, uh, the corporate system, they all, these orders are all centralized into this one uh, system here. That this system actually connects or it links these other systems so that they can communicate uh, together. Now, uh, let's talk about another type of enterprise systems, enterprise applications. We call it a customer relationship management uh, system. This customer relationship management system help firms manage their relationship with their customers. Customer relationship management systems provide information to coordinate all of the business processes that deal with the customers in sales, in marketing, and services. The aim is to optimize revenue or to do what we call customer satisfaction and even customer retention. This information helps firms to identify, to attract, and to retain the most profitable customers, even to provide better services to existing customers and even increase sales. So uh, that is what we call a customer relationship and management system. We have the last system, we call it a knowledge management system. Uh, the value of the firm's products and services is based not only on its physical resources, but also on intangible knowledge assets. Some firms perform better than others because they have better knowledge about how to create, how to produce, and how to deliver products and services. So this firm knowledge is difficult to imitate. It is unique and can be leveraged into long-term strategic benefits. So we need what we call knowledge management systems that enable organizations uh, to better manage processes for capturing and applying knowledge and expertise. These systems, they actually collect all relevant knowledge and experience in the firm and make it available wherever and whenever it is needed to improve business processes and management decisions. They also link the firm to external sources of knowledge. Actually, knowledge management systems put processes for acquiring storing, distributing, and even applying knowledge 
as well as processes for creating new knowledge and integrating it into the organization. So they include enterprise-wide systems for managing and distributing the documents, the graphics, and digital knowledge objects. Systems for creating corporate knowledge, directories of employees with the special areas of expertise, office systems for distributing knowledge and information, and even knowledge work systems to facilitate knowledge creation. Other knowledge management applications use intelligent techniques that codify knowledge for use by other members of the organizations and even tools for knowledge discovery that recognize patterns and important relationships in large pools of data. So we need uh, to understand about the organization, we need to understand about our employees, how, how much skills they have, how can we use them, uh, how they, what they have is relevant to the organization, we need to know the experience that is in the firm, etc. So that kind of information, that kind of knowledge is very important within a particular organization. And to facilitate that, we need a knowledge management information system. Ooh. Today we have had a very long, long lecture. But thank you very much for being with you until the end of this lecture. Thank you very much for following Elimika Mtandaoni. My name is Agustino Mogos and this is Elimika Mtandaoni. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.